This is the proof meter from my 1959 Ford 871 Selecto Speed. The problem is the hour meter stopped working, however the RPM gauge is still working. And we're going to see if we can see what's wrong with it and see if we can fix it. Off camera I already started the disassembly removal process. The first thing was taking the uh, drive cable off of the back side of the proof meter and it just screws on to the back side you can see and then there's this retaining plate that is held on with two 338s uh, nuts and star washers and uh, you can see the stud sticking down underneath so just be very careful with removing those so you don't drop them what I used to get those out was this uh, Craftsman quarter inch flex um, screwdriver with a uh, short socket on it. So with those parts removed, we can lift out the proof meter. All right, now that the proof meter has been removed and I have it sitting on the bench, if you look at the back side, you have um, the two mounting studs which we removed to get the meter out. And then there are two uh, screws here that hold this cap on the back side. And this cap cannot come off unless the uh, bezel is removed from the glass. And the problem with that is it is pressed on here and pressed down around the lip of this back cover. So the meter on the bezel it does have a little slot that's already cut out. And so what I'm gonna try and do is pry up on this uh, tin that's rolled over uh, this cap and see if I can get this off without damaging it. So the first thing is I'm gonna remove these two screws. Now, like I said, I'm gonna start with removing these two screws just partially because I don't want anything inside to come loose prematurely. And then I'm gonna start uh, pulling up on this bezel where it's rolled over and see if we can get it to uh, come up just enough to free up this retaining cap. I'm just going so slow with this. So I really we prefer not to have to remove this at all. Uh, it looks like that's just the way it is. You can see a little thin bladed screwdriver slips out pretty easily. So just watch your fingers as you're working your way around. This isn't broken, this is just uh, paint. It's uh, flaking off as we go around the side. Now the next thing I'm trying to think of is what can we use to press this back on to make it look somewhat decent? And again, that's part of my concerns on having to roll this out. So I'm gonna to continue to work on this a little bit off camera, and then I'll bring you back. So I've continued to work my way around this bezel trying to get it um, out away from this cap the way it's pressed. And, you know, the other concern is where can you start to work this out that you're not putting pressure on the glass on the front because, you know, break the glass and that just causes another problem. So we're gonna continue to work with this, see if we can get this lip straightened out uh, closest to 90 degrees as we can to make a uh, clear pathway for this cap to slide out. All right, something I just uh, came up with here on the fly. I've switched to a Phillips screwdriver, about number two bit, and that gives a nice surface for the cutout in the um, Phillips bit to slide in around that bezel and give a nice rounded contour to continue to, to work around this. And it's actually bringing that bezel out more at a 90 degree angle so that this stamped cap can come out. 
So I'm just using the tip of that number two Phillips and kind of uh, forcing it just a little bit around this cap to use as a leverage point and slowly working myself around. It's like using an old fashioned can opener to open this up. So I think we're just about there. So um, probably would be wise before I start pulling this off to put a pencil mark on here so I know where this cap needs to line up. I don't think it makes a difference, but you never know. Once you tear into it, it becomes the point of no return. So put a pencil mark here. See if I got a Sharpie in my little container here so I can see it on this paint. So that'll get us close. Really shouldn't make a difference, but you never know. So let's see. Oh, here we go. Just gonna slide that off. All right, so there's the bezel. We got that off. Um, all right, so it kind of looks like this glass might be sealed on here with some type of black glue. So we'll just let that, we'll let that alone. And maybe not, it might be sealed on there. No, nope. there it is. Well, it does have some type of a sealant on there, a gasket at one time to keep the weather out. So we got that out. See what happens here. Uh, get these screws out. And let's see. Well, it really isn't really isn't popping out here. So I think what we need to do is we'll do another witness mark for the 12 o'clock on this um, outer canister. And let me explore this a little bit more. All right, what I found is the stem that comes out of the back side of this cap um, is actually cut around the uh, drive unit where that uh, cable connects on the back. So this is cut out, so it's kind of pressed in there. And I'm gonna give this a slight tap and see if that loosens anything up. really seeing where this has moved any. So, hmm. All right, let me uh, take another uh, peek at this, see what's going on. Okay, so what's going on was it just needed to be on a solid surface to give it a few taps, so. Here's the inside of that uh, lid. I'm sorry for the shadows. Um, in my shop, I have 21 overhead lighting units. They're all fluorescent. They all take four of the four foot bulbs. And in every one of those lighting units, at least one of the ballasts have burned out. So this summer, what I want to do is go and replace all of those uh, lights with a um, uh, LED tube and remove the ballast altogether. So that's just a side note. All right, so what do we have back here? Got some oil from a prior attempt at trying to get this thing freed up. All right, so we got the worm gear. And I'm sorry about the pictures here, folks. Uh, I don't know what to do to get some better images. Um, so Let's take a look. Well, we'll just go with the face of it here. And then we'll spin this around. Uh, so your top side view. We have the uh, mechanism in here. So I'm gonna have to do some of the looking off camera so I can really see what's going on in here. But we've got a, a, a gear right here and then in down inside here, if you can see it, there's a worm, worm gear to drive that. And then we have the mechanism to drive the uh, RPM gauge. So 
let's uh, take a closer look here. So the printing on the back here, this is interesting. King Sealy Corporation, it says right here, King Sealy Corporation, Ann Arbor, Michigan, made in the USA. Now, uh, who remembers King Sealy? King Sealy was a division of General Motors, and at one time, King Sealy, here's your trivia, they produced different shop tools for Sears Craftsman. Uh, I have a 1950 Craftsman table saw, and underneath the Craftsman logo, it says, by the King Sealy Corporation. So it looks like they had their hands dipped in a lot of stuff. So stand by, and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on with this. And I don't know how I'm gonna show all this in detail. So uh, I don't have the nomenclature for these parts, so you just have to geek me on that. So anyways, uh, you, the uh, drive cable obviously turns this. And inside of this housing, get to this here. Uh, hang on, let me uh, readjust. All right, on the bottom side, uh, you can see there is a worm gear here, which drives another gear down here. And as that falls over, <laughs> this is horrible. Hang on, all right, this is the best of the worst. So in here you can see there is a uh, horizontal worm gear, a vertical one uh, at a right angle that goes down to the, the uh, drive gear for the hour meter. So um, this spins around, it looks like it should pick up on one of these uh, dog ears on the hour meter to make it click over. So, um, that's what's going on. I'll rotate this over to the other side. You can see there's a uh, gear uh, on the shaft that comes in where the uh, cable drives the unit. And you can see those two worm gears where they hook up at a 90 degree and then the other gear to drive the hour meter. So uh, I'll be back shortly once I get this figured out. So just another view in here. These worm gears, the other screwdriver, these uh, worm gears, everything is loose. So I don't know why that mechanism's not working. So let me blow it out with some air, put a little lubricant in there and see if we do any improvements. All right, here's the bottom side of the proof meter. And what it is, is there is a gear Hopefully you can see that. So you have this gear, which is on the drive shaft of where the cable screws on. So this gear needs to spin and it lines up with the horizontal gear here, which ends up driving the other worm gear that's at the 90 degrees on the opposite side and what it looks like is this gear where it mates with the uh, driven gear the teeth have worn on that and that is probably what has stopped this from working so the whole body you can see it's all cast it's either aluminum or zamac um, since it's King Sealy, it might be Zamac since they used that for all the gears and the old Craftsman stuff. So I'll see if there's anything we can do with this. If, um, if we can't get this to marry up and, and work, then this uh, hour meter will no longer work. And I have no idea if you could even get parts for it. Let's zoom back out here. And even if you could, See the opposite end, it's in there, it's pressed, has a little brass washer, and then the sides are peened in to hold it in place. But to disassemble this, everything is pressed together, and 
we might as well be looking for a watchmaker to get this apart. So I'll continue to work with this a little bit before we put it back together. All right, I found the problem. The driven gear, which is what uh, was powered by that drive shaft, that flexible shaft. What we have is the, the driven gear. If I can get in here with something to point to it a little bit better. There we go. So this driven gear right here is stripped. And that's what makes the entire thing work. So uh, this thing is dead in the water. Uh, the good thing is if if I ever decide to replace it, I know where the meter stopped and I know about how many hours I've used this tractor since I've had it, but um, that is a shame. Um, and I really don't know, like I was saying, if there are even parts available to rebuild this. I don't know how to take this apart any further and I really wouldn't want to, um, not knowing what what to do. So uh, that is the tail of the Ford Selecto Speed proof meter. RPM gauge works, but our meter does not. So uh, if you have any thoughts on this, shoot me a line, let me know. Other than that, take care and stay well, everybody, and be safe. Adios. All right, I'll show you what I did off camera. So remember there was the two little witness marks um, that retained this uh, one worm gear in. I was able to uh, take out that excess material that had peened this gear and the little brass washer in place, used these little wire cutters to grip a, grip a hold of it and was able to slide it out. Uh, you can see this gear uh, definitely um, is worn down in spots. So what I did find is if I was able to elevate this gear coming out of where it's recessed in uh, just ever so slightly, it would actually catch enough to work. So I'm gonna see if I can use a little brass uh, carburetor plug and use that as a spacer down on that uh, left hand nub of the gear and see if that's enough to slide it over enough to catch some of the good teeth on this gear and see if we can't make this work. Um, if it's already broke, you can't break it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, so what I'm doing is I have these very tiny washers and I'm gonna stack two of them together on the end of that gear, which will push the gear out a little bit to some good teeth, and we'll see if that's enough of an offset to make it made up to this driven gear where it has uh, some damage to it and see if it works. Well, we were on the right track, but it did not work reliably to spin the gears inside to make the hour meter work correctly. I experimented with some different thicknesses of washers to draw that gear out a little bit more, but it was either too much or too little, and if it was out too far, it would bind up the mechanism. Um, if it wasn't thick enough, it, it wouldn't catch, but it wouldn't catch reliably. <laughs> so I think we're just gonna call this done for now. I've reassembled it, put it back together, uh, repunched those witness marks to hold that gear in place. I'll put this back together, I'll put it back in the tractor, and if anyone has any ideas on how to repair this, or maybe you know someone who makes repairs to these old meters, please let me know. Thank you much, and take care. All right, so I've reassembled this. I've put the uh, glass, cleaned the glass, put the bezel back on marked it up where it was at. The uh, two retaining screws have been uh, reinserted. And I've set this on a little piece of, of um, 
cork and I'm gonna try and get this bezel pushed back down around this cap. Uh, I don't know if this will work or not. Um, I'm just gonna try and use a brass hammer, but it's too big. Get this machinist hammer and I'll see if it'll work for what we need to do. of a job so let's reassess all right i'm gonna make uh another great job here it's an old craftsman uh chisel for punch and uh we're gonna ruin the tip of it real quick and it's semi-rounded on the top side from use so i'm just gonna go around and start rolling that bezel back over and uh Keep doing this a little bit at a time. Get that edge to roll back over. So you see we've uh, rolled this bezel back over the edge and I just need to go back and dress it up now uh, with a wide flat blade screwdriver to crimp this down and then finish it up. All right, I changed my mind. I'm gonna use a piece of round stock and just go around the edge gives a lot flatter impact and not as sharp. All right, I've gone around this twice with the uh, piece of round stock and that uh, trued up the edge. So I'll reinstall this back into the tractor and I don't think there's anything else that we need to show on this as you can tell I never know when I'm gonna finish the video so uh, we just put this back in the tractor it's just a reverse of process from when we took it out and uh, maybe we can get it repaired someday by someone who has the parts and knowledge but at least we know what's inside of it so take care goodbye <laughs>